Hey ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jan Schmetto. I'm a professor of cardiac surgery here at Hannover Medical School in Hannover, Germany. And I'm the director of the Heart Failure and Mechanical Circulatory Support Program, one of the most innovative and largest uh, programs in the country. The key question is, what is heart failure? Heart failure is a very general definition of a disease or of a group of diseases and it more or less describes uh, the situation that a normal heart is going to get sick and is not able to pump enough uh, blood through the body and the general description is that the pump function is failing. Why do people get heart failure? There are different uh, possibilities and etiologies to get heart failure. It can start with uh, arterial uh, sclerosis, so uh, normal disease of patients who have um, uh, not enough blood coming through the heart vessels into the heart where the um, coronary vessels are sick and um, get um, a calcification of the vessels and then the blood supply to the heart is not uh, good enough and the heart is going to worsen the function. Um, then there are also genetically reasons, bad genes can lead to heart failure as well. But there are also influences like inflammation, myocarditis, uh, which is an inflammation of the heart, can cause heart failure. There are other smaller etiologies like postpartum cardiomyopathy. So during pregnancy, for example, uh, uh, the heart of a woman can worsen the function as well based on hormones and cytokines and uh, mediators in the blood, the heart can worsen and also there are different other etiologies like toxic reasons or chemotherapy if you uh, are suffering from cancer and need chemotherapy this can also worsen the function of the heart. There are different options to treat heart failure. This is dependent on the level of heart failure. Uh, at the first line treatment, we have normal medications. Before taking medications, it's already uh, good to prevent heart failure. What is important to prevent heart failure? Sport, avoidance of smoking, all the toxic agents need to be avoided. Good education, good uh, nutrition, uh, good food, good healthy food. This is already starting to uh, and good to prevent heart failure. Second line treatment is already medication. There are different medications uh, which you can titrate to the right level and try to amount and the cardiologists are perfect in uh, treating patients with heart failure drugs. Then often you, the patients need some smaller medical devices like pacemakers or defibrillators or resynchronization therapy uh, devices. To, to get the right beat of the heart. And if all these different treatment options fail, then more and more invasive treatment options need to be uh, um, uh, drawn. For example, uh, the, the valves of the heart are not uh, sufficiently closing, so you need to work on the heart valves and operate on them or get a, a clip on the valves. So these are options. And last but not least, uh, we have the option to treat these patients with mechanical circulatory support devices like artificial hearts, total artificial hearts or cardiac transplantation. A new heart is needed if all other treatment options are already uh, taken and done. And regardless of what is done, at the end, there's no alternative existing. But the patient is still extremely sick. The heart function is maybe only at 10, 15, 20%. And then the patient is put on a cardiac transplantation waiting list. If 
he or she fulfills all requirements, then only a cardiac transplantation. So the exchange of a very sick own heart with a new donor heart becomes necessary. Transplantation is considered to be the gold standard for the end stage heart failure treatment. However, we have a huge problem because heart transplantation is limited to the available donor hearts. I give you an example for Germany, only 300 or even less than 300 cardiac transplantations are able to be performed in Germany annually. Uh, however, at least the double, maybe even the tenfold amount of patients are waiting to get uh, uh, adequate treatment. Uh, they, there are 10, 15, 20% of the patients dying on the transplant list. Many of heart failure patients are not even listed to the cardiac transplantation list. So cardiac transplantation alone cannot fulfill the expectations of the a huge amount of patients, also not the expectations of the doctors and cannot fulfill the treatment expectations. So we are searching for excellent alternatives to cardiac transplantation to save many, many patients' lives. Patients receive an artificial heart who are not candidates for cardiac transplantation or who are eligible for cardiac transplantation but have no realistic chance to receive uh, the transplantation within an adequate time frame. This is a very, very excellent question because it's tough to answer. So first of all, the awareness of heart failure needs to be increased and this is uh, needs to be widely increased. I give you an example. Once um, patients hear the word cancer, this is automatically a word of danger, automatically associated with a limited uh, time expectancy. If you listen to the word heart failure, it sounds a little bit weak. Nobody really knows how sick uh, and how worse the situation is and how low the life expectancy of a really end-stage heart failure patient is. It's not associated the same way compared to cancer. So first of all, the awareness of how heart failure is impairing the quality of life and heart failure might uh, reduce the uh, life expectancy needs to be increased overall to the popula uh, population, to the people, to the patients out there and also to the uh, uh, politicians as well. We can live nearly a normal life. Of course, these patients were preoperatively extremely sick. They most often are not only sick with the heart, but also the reduced cardiac output, reduce the function of the lungs, liver, brain, and kidneys, but the artificial heart can normalize the circulation, can normalize the hemodynamics of a patient and then all the other organs can recover, kidney function can improve, liver can function can also improve, and this can lead to a nearly normal life. But what limits the uh, expectation of a normal life is still the energy supply towards the pump through a drive line. So it will probably not uh, be possible to, to swim with a total artificial heart, at least unless the drive line is still existing. As I'm a German surgeon, I uh, would like to answer this for Germany because I know the German market way better, better than the overall worldwide market, uh, including Australia and Antarctica. But uh, for Europe and Germany spoken, it's we have uh, in Germany we have 82 million inhabitants, and there are um, estimations. Uh, if you look at the numbers of how many patients suffer from uh, heart failure, syst systolic heart failure. Uh, and are in the range of 18 years to 70 years 
and there are estimations that there are annually 40 to 60,000 patients benefiting from an artificial heart implantation. Uh, of course, this seems to be an extremely high number and not every, uh, every patient out of this range will finally receive a VAD or a total artificial heart, but this already shows the estimation of a potential market. In addition to that, next to a huge wave of heart failing patients coming towards us, which is based on the high incidence of heart failure, but also the high prevalence of heart failure, we are going to see a huge amount of heart failing patients, not only for end stage heart failure, but also one step before, newer 3, newer 3B patients who are really suffering from heart failure, end stage heart failure. And I, um, I, I clearly foresee a promising future for all medical device treatment uh, uh, companies who, who dedicate their focus in this field. Real Heart is a very promising company. It's a European based, Scandinavian based with lots of uh, potential. Um, there's a huge amount of heart failing patients coming towards us. There are expectations that um, thousands and millions of heart failure patients are approaching us within the next decade. So regardless which company is investing into uh, heart failure therapies is already on the right side of, of, of the success street. But the physiological flow and the potential to, to revitalize a human heart with a total artificial heart is very, very uh, promising and makes a USP for uh, a real heart and is, it gives extremely positive feedback and potential to this company. Yes, um, you need different medications uh, on the one side uh, for cardiac transplantation. There are always two major risks. On the one side, you have a new heart and this is um, um, uh, the, the body recognizes the new heart as a foreign body. So all the immunological responses start and to avoid a rejection of the heart, you need to give immunologic uh, medication um, uh, to, to, to reduce the immunological response. If you give too much, your immunological response is too low and the body is afraid to receive infections. So on the one side, the risk to get a heart rejection and on the other side to get an infection has to be balanced with all the medications available in the field of cardiac transplantation. With the machines, the artificial hearts, it's similar. It's also a balance between the one and the others. Here it's uh, slightly different. The, here's not rejection and, and infection the risk. Here's thrombosis a risk. So the coagulation system of the body recognizes the foreign body and tries to endothelialize the, the, the machine. So meaning the coagulation system is activated to avoid a coagulation clot building into the pump you need to anticoagulate a patient giving meaning in uh, normal words making the blood thinner and then if you give coumadin like blood thinner making uh, medication anticoagulants you are at the risk of bleeding on the other side so why infection and th uh, rejection uh, is for cardiac transplantation the balance where you need to keep the patient in the middle with medications. Thrombosis and bleeding uh, are the balanced uh, factors for the success in artificial heart surgeries. The costs are tough to describe because um, actually as long as the numbers of implantations of artificial hearts are still relatively small, there are still many, many research and development costs which are um, more or less shifted towards the sales price of the devices. It's clear, and we learned it, for example, from the defibrillator industry, that at the beginning there was only one small company existing and they had high cost for R&D 
and these high costs were shifted to only small implantations. And though then, then the price for ICD was extremely high. Nowadays, there are multiple companies coming to the market, existing on the market, and of course, there are competitors and the R&D costs are reduced overall. So, uh, and the implantations are really significantly increased, then um, uh, the, the devices became affordable more or less to, to any center in any country in the world. So I expect something similar um, for artificial hearts as well. So actually we are still in the pioneering phase where we have high R&D costs and a small amount of implantations. The more implantations will come, the uh, lower the prices will get. Cardiac transplantation, the, the donor hearts cost nothing, but the treatment procurement uh, costs of course something. And uh, I, I don't see these as uh, uh, the opposite and to compare. I, I, I see total artificial heart needs to be compared to end-stage heart failure treatment, where you have patients who are suffering really from an impaired function of their own heart and they uh, uh, have to be hospitalized uh, to, to the hospitals very often, more frequently, uh, they, they lose the kidney function, they end up in uh, uh, impaired kidney function with the, the need for dialysis, for example. These are extremely high costs. They sometimes need to get treatment on the intensive care unit. All these uh, phases of life cost a lot to the social economics uh, systems. On the other side, with a total artificial heart implantation, you have the one-time cost where you have to invest into the machine and the surgery, but expecting that the kidney, liver, lung and heart function is more or less normal after such an implantation, we expect the overall costs uh, to be reduced in long term. So the international data on cardiac transplantation given by the International Society of Heart and Lung Transplantation, ISHRT, about 20 year survival rates of 20-24%. Meaning that 20 patients or every fifth patient out of 100% will survive the next 20 years. With an artificial heart, these numbers are not existing so far because all the new total artificial hearts are coming new to the market and were not explored 20 years ago. So we actually do not know it now. Theoretically, once a patient is very compliant and takes the recommend, recommended uh, medication in time and as the doctors recommend it and the patients take care of their driveline exit side extremely well, then more or less a normal life can achieved with a total artificial heart, but it's too early to say for how long. 